Hello and welcome to Stampscapes Live. We're going to be doing some, hopefully, some quick scenes here in grayscale, meaning black and white, or you can say monochromatic, whatever you want to call it. I have um, a couple of different compositions that I was just doing for my um, stamp sketching or um, detail, um, I don't know, whatever, uh, testing uh, videos just to... Uh, check on the uh, the plates and how those came in and how the rubber translated um, or how the designs translated into rubber form. And so I might finish a couple of these off, but you know, I, I, I didn't intend for them to be um, scenes, but just little test prints, but I think they could be uh, pretty good um, monochromatic pieces. I mean, if we could do them in color too, but um, I thought I would just finish them off here. Okay, so um, both uh, glossy cardstock and a semi-gloss cardstock, and I have a couple blank pieces here that we can use for that as well. Um, all right, so let's test these out. Um, I'm going to be doing it with the desert scenes. Now, one of the things about the <laughs> these two that I already have um, stamped out here uh, this one's not finished right here. I'd add in some additional stamps in here. But one of the things that I might do is, you know, instead of stamping or coloring over these pieces here the way I'm going to on the glossy cardstock is a lot of times I would just get a little bit of a background going in here first and then stamp my images over that and then do some fine tuning um, with some shadow work after I can see where I've placed my um, objects in here. Um, I'm saying that because the uh, ink on these trees in here, although it's dry, I was using a super juicy um, uh, Marvy ink pad, black and black ink pad. So I'm not sure if that's going to um, smear or not. I don't think it will, but it could. So that's what's going on with that. So um, I'll show you how you do kind of a, um, a grayscale background first and then stamp over it, you know, just in your black inks or whatever, and not have to worry potentially about the smearing of imagery. Okay, so um, in just grayscale pieces, I mean, naturally it's going to be a pretty fast type of, um, you know, finished scenario here because we're not going through, you know, all kinds of different um, colors on here. And it's one of those things, you know, some people really like the uh, look of um, grayscale pieces, black and white. Some people like black and white photography and black and white movies. It doesn't mean that it has to look old fashioned. There's still people that do things in grayscale. Uh, a lot of times, um, a lot of photographers love shooting in that. A lot of um, uh, movie directors, you know, if they had their choice, they would do all grayscale, but you know, uh, the mass public responds more to color, but um, I don't know. I think it's a good idea to do both. Hello, Candy. Good to see you. Yeah, the glossy cardstock, huh? I decided to pull that out um, <laughs> fairly recently. Again, I haven't been using it too much over this last year, I would say. It's kind of hard. I don't know. It used to be so easy to get glossy cardstock. Basically, every stamp store... I don't know about every scrapbooking store, but every stamp store used to carry glossy cardstock. And now there's hardly any, you know, stamp stores, dedicated stamp stores around. So, I don't know, it's just a little bit harder to get. And especially overseas, it's really difficult to find sometimes. Um, just they don't, you know, like in, you know, the U.S., there's uh, places like Kelly Paper where you can buy it off the rack here in the West. But you can also find it um, online, you know, through other sellers um, where you can find these, um, um, you know, just paper sellers that traditionally, you know, are, you know, sell mostly to um, printers, professional printers. But, um, you know, in other countries, it's kind of hard to find sometimes. You have to, you know, kind of be a, you know, printing uh house and uh you know you're getting your papers through wholesalers you know which aren't necessarily selling to the public because they're you know they're selling things in large reams of uh you know or um i don't know like pallets of paper like the raw you know large master sheets which are really huge you know it's not really a, a big thing to sell you know a ream of eight and a half by 11 of this type of glossy cardstock. 
Um, so, yeah, yeah, you know, just, I don't know, a little bit harder to find. So I'm just I'm trying to use um, other things other than glossy, although glossy is just one of those things that's going to be the most dramatic kind of attention-getting style of paper that's out there, you know? That's why there's no kind of a secret as to why um, things like movie posters and book covers and uh, things like that are, are done on glossy cardstock. Okay, so anyways, I'm just doing some this swatchy style of a streaky background in here. And... Um, that was using the London Fog, which is a little bit more bluish, at least in this re-inker that I have. I thought that I've used London Fog before with just the pad and other things. So I don't know if like a batch of um, this re-inker is going to be a little bit different, you know, potentially from batch to batch. I don't know. But it's a little bit more of a cool tinge right here. But um, you can see I kind of just added those streaks in there and it gives it a little bit more atmosphere. You know what I mean? It's good to have a little bit of variation, especially if you're going um, monochromatic. The less kind of information you have in here, so information with color would be hue, you know, what color it is, intensity, relative, um, bright and dull. There's the value, light and dark, and then there's temperature, warm and cool. So when you're working with grayscale, you know, you don't have a lot of that. So we're dealing with, um, so what I've done here is I've created value, which is light and dark in there. But in this case, you know, I mean, it's a little bit, you know, it, it, there's a little bit of temperature in this because like I said, it's a, it's a little bit of more of a bluish gray, which I don't think it's really supposed to be. Yeah, chrome coat was the one, Candy, huh? Now, uh, Candy, when did you buy your chrome coat? Hello to anyone, if anyone's watching on uh, Facebook. If anyone's watching on Facebook Live, um, I can't see your comments live. I don't know how, I'm using this software that, I don't know, it seems to only allow for one um, chat. Uh, um, whatever uh, window for, yeah, and, I, and I'm seeing the, ch you know, the chat for um, the, uh, anyone that's on watching on YouTube. But hello, if anyone's, you know, checking this out or checks in or, you know, if anyone's watching this on the replay, thanks for watching. Okay, now what I'm doing is here, I'm kind of making this little, this is a paper towel I'm using. People hate when I use paper towels. It's like, hey, you know, I bought, you know, my ink applicators or whatever, I spent this amount of money, you know, Kevin, I don't need to, you, you know, you'd be using like a paper towel. <laughs> but, you know, we're talking about kind of the scarcity of, uh, or the, um, not scarcity, but just the availability of, um, hello, Susan, the availability of glossy cardstock, um, especially in other countries. Even Canada, it's like kind of weird, you know, to try to find that sometimes now. But, um, you know, paper towels, everyone has them, right? So I find that they work just fine in terms of my ink applications. You gotta, you know, just get the feel of it. I use a little bit of reinker in here and I find that it's, you know, really easy to apply that way. You just need a lot of liquid in here. If it's kind of dry and you're kind of doing that on a dry piece of paper. It kind of, it goes on really rough, you know, rough like that. So um, you want to get a good <clears throat> amount of um, saturation in here so that, and then you don't want it to be too blobby when you go out. So you just kind of use a little bit of a lighter pressure and you stay in one area and you can get these kind of nice transitions in here. And I like a little bit streaky because I tend to think that looks good in things like skies or water or even on the ground. It doesn't, everyone like somewhere along the line, it's, you know, the associated, um, I don't know, it's just the stamping kind of public or whatever. <clears throat> um, I think it's through the use of Copic markers or something like that. It became kind of one of those things where, um, like super smooth transitions with zero texture was like the 
I don't know, the test for like quality in terms of um, um, the marker, but also someone's skill level. Okay. And, and that might be good. I mean, <clears throat> it wouldn't be bad to be able to do that, but <clears throat> you want to you really utilize texture and uh, things like that in artwork because that that's variation there. Um, when you have like everything is like absolutely smooth everywhere, um, it's one texture. So there's no textural range in those pieces, you know, which is good to have. Not in everything, but, um, you know, you want to be able to do that or add that into your pieces, um, you know, uh, for variation like that. Now, see, this is, now I'm going with black and see that little streaky texture like that, that really adds to the piece, I think. Um, when people, you know, painters always, you know, they want to include um, things like brush strokes um, in their pieces. Usually, not in every artwork, but, um, you know, I would say I would say most painters, uh, the brush stroke, brush stroke is like a integral, you know, um, element within the, uh, the piece. Okay, so see this right here, and I added um, that reinker fluid in here, and that kind of moistens even glossy cardstock like this. It's 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 absorbing the you know the the inks. Nothing's like wet on here, but it makes the pulp of the paper a little bit damp, and it makes for an easy application of your darker tones. So when you do this type of thing, if you're doing it like this, what you're doing is you're not just coloring, but you're also kind of saturating a little bit of the surface, a little bit, I wouldn't say saturating, but it's moistening the surface, but also a little bit of the pulp of the paper, okay? And that makes the darker tones easier to apply like that. What happens is when people get, if you know, they just kind of color it a little bit, and then they apply like a you know a streak of something like this. It's going to be like this on the a dry piece of paper. I mean that is stuck on there. But when you're doing that over a little bit more of a moist piece of paper like this, you can kind of really kind of move this around, and you can blend a lot easier because you're blending wet into moist as opposed to wet into dry like that. That makes sense. Okay, so I'm going like this. I'm adding a little bit of shadows down here. I'm just going to try to leave some of those rock tops a little bit lighter. And I want to anchor these trees down into the uh, scene a little bit more. And then here I'll show you where those kind of streaky kind of applications come into play here like this. See, I'm always kind of doing this type of thing. Okay, so it goes from a little bit darker and it transitions like that. So it's usually from the outside edge in. So dark to light like that. So when you come in over here, you do it the opposite way like this. Don't do it like this and like this. This is a little awkward. See how your hand kind of naturally just goes like this. And this is a really nice and easy ergonomic stroke like that. And then when you want to get the other side, you just flip it around like this. <laughs> I know a company that had you know, it was a plastic Lazy Susan, basically, like for your spices or something like that. Okay, just right off the shelf. But they they put these, like, rivets in there or something like that with, like, rubber bands in between or something like that. So you can slip your piece of card underneath there and that will hold it down. And then you can spin your card around on this plastic Lazy Susan. And I thought, huh, yeah, okay. You know, I don't, when I want to spend my normal, I just go like that. <laughs> you know, it's not like my, I don't know. I, I thought that was kind of a weird kind of, you know, device that they were marketing. I, I didn't say that, you know, you know, when they, you know, yeah, that you're at a convention, the demonstrating something, you know. Um, but I always thought it was just kind of easy just to go like that. <laughs> And it was kind of weird because it was kind of a raised thing too. And, you know, it made for, you know, those lazy seasons, you know, you know, they're kind of, they bow in if you're pressing into it too. It's 
stamp stories from the past. Hello, Cynthia, how are you? Okay, let's see here. Now, if anyone you've bought one of those things, hey, that, you know, that was an awesome device and really helpful and beneficial. <laughs> I'm just saying it wasn't for me. Not in terms of the way they were demonstrating it. Okay, you know, like, uh, what, it must, I don't know, it's 25, 30 years ago at this point in time. Okay, watch this right here now. Okay, so I'm starting to really build up a lot of ink on here. And one of the things that's kind of cool about the uh, the glossy, okay, this isn't going to happen on like a semi-gloss or a matte, but you see that ink pull right there? It's almost like one of those alcohol ink kind of applications, but I like that little atmospheric look to it like that, okay? Let me see if I can get kind of a narrow streak across here. See, I can kind of manipulate it. I'm almost like wiping ink off of the surface at this point in time. See like that? See how that kind of develops like that? It's because I have a nice, you know, layer of uh, that first ink that I've laid down. It's not really so much the, in this case, the, the Black Marvy that's kind of creating that ability. It's the first color. It's the uh, London Fog. And Memento inks are thicker uh, than Marvy inks. So you can do, yeah, I mean, you can do it all with, you know, Memento. If you're using all Memento or something like that, though, all of the, you know, thicker styles of inks. Um, you're going to be manipulating the surface a lot more um, just because everything is a lot thicker. So everything is kind of a lot more surface oriented, okay? The Marvy ink is able to kind of penetrate here a little bit more. I mean, you can test, you know, you can play around. It doesn't have to be Marvy, but um, Marvy was typically one of the thinner um, dye-based inks out there. I say was because I think, I don't know, at this point in time, I think every place is sold out of the uh, the Marvy re-inkers. Marvy matchables aren't being made anymore. Um, I, I, I think Marvy, just in general, are, they're probably discontinuing all their inks if um, dye-based inks, because I think I heard that the, um, the 1500 series markers, the big, thick Marvy brush markers were being discontinued as well. Those ones might still be out there though. And those, you know, we used just those exclusively for years before the any dye base pads were kind of invented. Rainbow pads were out, you know, earlier than uh, just raised single color pads. But so we were just using um, markers. I mean, you can just rub it onto a, you know, paper towel like this, the marker tip, because they're really thick, and then you can just apply it like that too. But things like uh, Memories Ink, I think, would be a good one. Um, it's really super thick uh, for this type of look right here. But anyways, this is just you know, a little grayscale piece like this. Okay, so that was your dye-based inks right over the top of it. And I think that finished the scene up pretty good. Let's let's see, let's add in a little bit more texture. This is a scene that was just a nothing stamp sketch. I was just testing for... Um, I don't know if this was a stamp sketch video or if it was my impression kind of detail test, you know, right after I got the stamps. Um, so, um, I don't know, but I, but I think it looks fine as a kind of like a finished little piece here. Adding a little bit of a, a little textural element. I think if this is a stamp sketching one, I think I would have used this just to anchor down my um, foundation in here a little bit more to give a little bit of a common texture throughout this area. Like that. My scale is a little bit off of the scorpion um, right there. If it's right next to that Joshua tree, unless the Joshua tree was kind of small, that little scorpion right there is like the size of like a lobster. <laughs> Okay, so anyways, two people going out. Um, that scorpion there is like, um, it's non-venomous, venom, venomous, venomous, by the way. So you won't get scared about those people getting stung. <laughs> All right, so anyways, there's a black and white piece. So 
really easy and fast to do. And it's because we're not adding in like tons of other color, but I think that looks pretty dramatic that way. And if you just do, one of the things I'm gonna do on all these things, um, pieces right here, I'm just gonna have things kind of darker around up here uh, on the perimeter and lighter in the middle. Okay, if I'm using a quarter page piece, maybe it's just light in the whole thing like that and just darker around the edge like that. So if you just kind of add a little bit of a vignette and then you add a little bit of shading around the base of your objects, okay? It makes for a pretty quick card and complete kind of um, lighting statement. I have this, um, I don't know, several videos out there on easy lighting. And one of the things that I do and everyone can do if you want to ever kind of just get your lighting down in a very basic way is that you just have a little bit of light in your sky area or just in some area of your piece and then you have illumination down in your surface could be water could be whatever and it doesn't matter what subject matter you have either but then see this right here this little bit of gray in between and it's gray in this because it's grayscale you know if i have a blue tones or something like that it would be blue in here but you just separate two areas of light like this so it's almost like this little eight up here okay and they don't have to be of equal size too. You can have a moon up here, so that's your light. Then you have a little bit of darkness down below, but then you have an area of illumination down here, which means that you just leave this light and this light down here. Light could be over here and the light could be down here, but you have this area in between that just separates the two that differentiates, and this differentiates um, light source and your reflected light when, you know, when it comes to scenes like that. Okay, so let's see. Let's do the same thing on this one. Um, let me add a couple of other things in here. If I do that right now, if I stamp out my imagery right now, and then I put that slathering of ink over the top of it. Now, these are dry because I stamped these probably, I don't know, a week or two ago. Or it, I don't know, it might be longer. A um, month ago with this first set. So I'm just going to lay down some um, tones over the top of this right now. And I'll do it like in this style right here. Okay, and then I'll just stamp my imagery over the top of that background tone in there. So, you know, when you're doing these scenes like this, if you want to make it really fast, um, you can even just do the entire background. And I'll do that on a, another scene right here after this one. But um, you can just do your backgrounds first, your lighting scheme, then just stamp your imagery right over the top of it. Hello, bugs! Oh, Candy, you still have, you, you still use your Marvy markers. Awesome. That's what I, that's what I, uh, as far as my stamping life went, that's what I grew up with. <laughs> uh, for those, um, you know, so we're talking about Marvy markers here, 1500 series, so. It was these styles of markers right here. These ones are really old because the entire barrel is a dedicated color. And these ones were the newer ones where they just did this barrel so that they didn't have to print up every separate color. And there was like a hundred and something colors, you know, separate barrel for every one of those. So all they needed to do was one barrel and then just do the, uh, you know, the cap and the, uh, the back opening area with a dedicated um, color scheme like that. So, and it, I don't know, these ones just looked better. So I see these ones were the newer ones. These ones probably came out like 25 years ago. <laughs> but we used to sell a lot of those um, when I worked for a stamp of the hand company. Okay, so let's set a lighting direction in here. Let's let's do that thing where maybe some light is coming from over here and uh, you know we'll have it mostly illuminated down here and that'll create this kind of this um, visual dialogue that's kind of a little bit more angled like this. And this one right here is just kind of you know, directly here, and then it goes down here like this, but let's skew it a little bit, okay? So this area is going to be lighter over here. This one's darker, so I usually start with my toning over here like this, okay? Now see, if I just stamped out these images right now, I'd probably be smearing them, you know, because, uh, you know, the ink would still be a little bit um, wet on them, okay? So now as I'm going over here, I'm kind of lifting and I'm going with a really kind of a soft touch. I'm just touching the paper like this and I'm going 
I'm getting my application of it done with repetition. I'm not trying to get it in one streak, and that makes it a lot easier for me and a lot more um, kind of user-friendly um, because I'm not applying a lot of ink at any one stroke, okay? I'm just trying to get it in repetition. So see like this right here, and I'll just keep going there, and I'll just kind of the more layering you do, the more ink that's applied and the darker the ink becomes because you're applying more of that one color there. Okay, now, the thing is for me, and like everyone else, what you'd have to do is, when you get in here, if that's going to remain nice and light, you know, you have to kind of avoid the temptation to color in there, you know, because we're used to, you know, coloring a little bit more. This is a little bit wet with my, you know, reinker fluid right now. And here, Here's that separation between light source, okay, and reflected light down here. So you see you just separate the two, you know, areas like this, okay? Now this is a little bit too much light right up here. I should stamp a moon or something like that up in here. Okay, no, I don't want this just completely open over here, so I'm going to do it like a shorter stroke like this, okay? I mean, what this implies is that there's just like some haze or something like that that's kind of blocking out whatever it is, the moon or the sun or something like that, whatever light source there is up there, okay? That's what that would kind of represent as is. But like I said, we can stamp in some sort of sky figure in there if we want to. Okay, now this is getting drier on here, so I'm going to, you know, close this in a little bit more and... I haven't even re-inked at all. We, we almost like shaded the entire thing just with one application of uh, ink in here. But as this gets drier, what you do is you utilize that. So see, I'm able to come right in here and just get this, you know, because it's, you know, a very light, dry application of this ink right here. So I have a lot more control over it. You know, I could fill in more if I want to over here now. Um, but it's so dry on here, it's... You know, it's just really doing like a very small application of that hue. Okay, so here I'm kind of coloring in some rocks a little bit more like this. Uh, by the way, so the thing that makes this easy once again that people are just aren't used to doing most of the times if you haven't done this before is uh, you just have to have a lot of ink on here <clears throat> and then you just use a real light touch with it okay and, i mean you know once it starts getting drier i start to press a little bit harder you know to get more ink out because it's getting too dry on the surface like that but um and sometimes you can't really see like in one stroke what's kind of going on here especially over the top of that but i know that you know this is getting a little bit like incrementally a little bit darker right here so you know i just kind of stay in that area so you can always test it right here see you can always still get some color out of that you know after all of that you know color's already been applied so so i know that there's things down there but sometimes when people for, you know do this for the first time it's like they go like this and they're thinking i don't see anything happening like at all so they re-ink it so they're, they go in there the big slathering again it's a little bit more precarious you know to get kind of a more kind of delicate softer application of it down so a lot of ink to begin with and then utilize your dryer applicator it doesn't have to be a paper towel um, paper towels work really good though and some people are saying they're getting a lot of the texture of the paper towel. You know, this is like, you know, from Costco, they're getting that spongy weave texture. But it's because, you know, you need to get it kind of smashed down, you know, a little bit. Or just stay in one area. And, you know, you won't have that texture anymore. It goes away like in seconds. Not that this, is, this isn't like a paper towel kind of, you know... Uh, technique video or something like that. You can use whatever applicators you want, you know, to kind of create this type of thing in here. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Oh, paper towel as opposed to the stylus. I have no idea. Um, because I used, I typically would use both um, tools. 
and this is, you know, this is like my tool here, you know, until they're pretty dry. Okay, now I inked up with black ink right now, so I'm kind of anchoring down my imagery a little bit more now, okay? So this right in here, I, I kind of added it right in here, right in here. So this is where you kind of go do, you, you know, some of your kind of specific types of things. If you don't feel comfortable with this, then just take a go over the top of this background and add in your shading or something like that with, you know, your Marvy, uh, Tombos, La Plumes, or your alcohol inks. And you can add down some shadows. Go with a really light tone at first, you know, or a little, a tone that's just a little bit darker than this. Or if you can't tell, then start off with a lighter one, see if you can see it, and then just work incrementally darker and do your alcohol ink blend, you know. If you don't get it blended really well, then, you know, take your blender pen and just blend it in there. So, you know, there's all kinds of different things you can use on here. You can't really use colored pencils on um, glossy cardstock. It's just too slippery for that. But, you know, this, you know, this, uh, this type of thing on, now see my little road runner, I just gave it a little bit of a shadow like that. You know, this paper towel is not going to be good for that. So, you know, use the tools that, you know, whatever's the most comfortable for you. Okay, so again, um, <clears throat> like this one right here, coming in from the outside like that. I mean, however dark you want to make this, that's totally up to you. You can just leave it as is up there. If you want it typically a little bit more dramatic, then what you do is you add more contrast. So... Um, I don't know. Let's let's add more contrast in here. You know, you can always hold back, you know, but you know, as I'm doing this, I usually take it, I don't know, to the extreme here, just in terms of, uh, you know, this video channel and, you know, giving a lesson in that uh, in case anyone wants to go darker, then they can do it like that. But see, what I do is I start making this a little bit more narrow, the darker I get, and I get a little bit more I don't know, I guess selective in terms of my placement of that, but. Um, oh, and if you, if you want to, too, you know, if you do these grayscale, grayscale pieces like this, sometimes I work this way, um, especially when I'm doing really large scenes where I don't want to just be, I don't want to be coloring, you know, for, you know, I don't know, whatever, five hours or something like that. What I do is I do a grayscale background like this where all the lighting is already established. And then I go over my grayscale pieces and I add in color right over the top of it. It's not as pure of a color if you're putting like greens over the top of gray and black or something like that, but um, it's a really good way to work if you have kind of large areas that you just want to get quickly covered, you know. I mean, these are half-page scenes too, and I just, you know, that first color I just inked up with one application of re fluid and that took care of the entire thing. And this is, you know, there's a lot of saturation in here um, on this on this cardstock. Okay, so this is the black. So see, I'm not going to go, you know, fill this whole area in here like that. But see, there's just that little streak like that. You make that a little bit darker up there. And by contrast, that area there seems lighter. Which is another thing too. If you ever make this, oh my god, I I I lost all my white at the paper. Okay, that happens to me all the time um, when I'm doing these things. So um, you're not going to reclaim lighter areas. You know what I mean? Unless you do some kind of bleaching technique or something like that. But if something's not looking light enough to you anymore, you, you filled it all in with gray or something like that. But you still want that to represent lighting in there then you just take the area around it and make it a little bit darker and that will look lighter by contrast. So if I make this a little bit darker right here, so that went up like, that was probably, I don't know, like seven, 10% darker, right? Like a gray, I'm mean, using black, but um, it's that much darker. So that right there is by contrast, it looks 10%, you know, whatever, seven, 10% lighter, okay? So, if you go too dark in an area, I don't know, it seems kind of weird, but you just make the area around it 
darker, okay? And then it seems lighter by contrast. So there's the little things you do. I mean, I do this in color work too, but when you're working just in grayscale like this, you know, there's not, you know, you're, there's less information, you know, there's less um, things that uh, color provides. So what you do is you just kind of, you can play around with things like lighting a little bit more. So here's this kind of dialogue right here. See the lighting is right here and the reflected light is like right in here. So you've taken this lighting scheme and we've gone like that with it, see? And this area right in between is the thing that separates the two like that, okay? And I find that pretty key. You can make this darker in between if you want to, but you know, just that little haze in between, you know, will create your lighting scheme. And you can just do that. You can do that for, uh, you know, 100% of your scenes and that's all you'll ever have to kind of be aware of. <clears throat> when it comes to really effective lighting, you, you can do th three things too. I mean, there could be a light area right here. And there could be another light area in here. There could be illumination right here and you can have illumination right over here. You know, you could break these things up too, you know, but if you want to just go for the, uh, you know, the two areas of light, you know, you can do that just about on every scene if you wanted to and it would look very, very effective. So here's a little bit darker down here, you know, if you want to. I like to go a little bit darker on my four corners. Maybe not that one because that's right next to the light. So I'll go three corner, um, uh, three corner vignetting, I guess I would call it. Framing, yeah. So I'll go like this right here, like that. Most people already do this. They just don't think about it as lighting. But, um, you know, when they're doing their card, they just take their little sponge applicator and they put a little bit of tone around the edge. Sometimes they take like their pad and just do that. And that's the exact same thing as this. I'm, this one might be a little bit more extreme where I'm kind of taking the colors in more. Um, but it's the exact same idea. It's kind of just framing. All right, so. I'm kind of tapping right here too, by the way, because when I streak in there, I'm kind of, at this point in time, I'm kind of removing ink like there. You can kind of see where it's removed like that. So anyways, there's your lighting right in there. Let's finish this piece off with some additional um, imagery in here. Hello, Linda. Yeah, uh, Linda, these are just the, uh, I, I don't know, the stamp sketches or the uh, impression tests right here so far on these. It looks pretty good though, and just black and white though, doesn't it? Okay, now watch this, see? Here's a little trick here too, with, you know, textures um, that you're using. I'm using the tiny rock small. Okay, so in my darker areas, see this area underneath the cacti right here? This cactus, it'll be in the cacti all around. See, I'm adding more of this right when I ink it up for the first time, it's going to leave a stronger impression, right? And I stamp that stronger impression in the shadows, but see this area is lighter in here. So I'm going with a lighter touch. And as you ghost, you know, your image out, you're getting a lighter impression. So it's darker in the darks, you know, and then you stamp that around in there and that's lighter and light. So let's do it right in here. You'll be able to see a little bit more. So it's darker on the bottom and it goes incrementally lighter up there. Let's do the same with this stamp right here, okay? So it's darker impressions, you know, the first few impressions that I make. I'm stamping that around in there. And then, you know, with a drier stamp, it's giving me a lighter impression each time. So there's that dark to light transition in here, just as it's happening with the dark to light, you know, ink applic. Now look at this right in here. This is really dark in here, right? So I'm probably gonna have to go for some pretty dark impressions in here. You know what I mean? I can't, you know, stamp this out several times and have that seventh impression or something like that showing. So you go with just darker impressions right in those dark areas. Same thing, I'll do that same thing right in here. I mean, you don't have to do it everywhere either. I'm just doing it, you know, to kind of, you know, show an example of that type of thing. So anyway, so there's your lighting right in there. 
All right, let's see. Let's see what some uh, additional imagery would look like in here. <clears throat> this one's just your, you know, your black and white uh, on the pre-printed vintage paper. Vintage paper already has kind of those transitions of tone in there going already, right? And that looks like kind of the, like horizon light just, you know, from where you snapped your imagery. You know, so things like that. You know, there's a little bit of light up here and, you know, it's light down here. I'd add in some shadows with my uh, um, colored pencil. But let's do this right here. Let's... Um, All right, let's go with the dye base ink on this one. On the, uh, the glossy cardstock. Uh, by the way, this is glossy cardstock and not glossy photo paper, okay? You can't do these types of applications of dye based ink on photo paper. It would dry the instant you touch down with that on that. But on glossy photo paper, one of the uh, really good um, combinations with that type of paper in terms of coloring are alcohol inks. And you can just do a lot of alcohol ink blending on the photo paper um, because the photo paper, that emulsion coating on there, it's very, very surface oriented um, so that the alcohol ink is just laying right on the surface and you can really blend it around with your um, other you know, multiple colors that you might use or your blender pen. Um, I really, like it, but it, you know, it's really textural looking. So you got to like, the, you know, the texture of it. You can't be uh, going into it thinking, oh, okay, I, I don't want any texture with my alcohol pens. I want this like perfectly smooth, you know, type of, uh, you know, looking application. All right, so filling in just a little bit more of the organ pipe cacti in here. I don't want to put anyone, some cacti behind that bird right there because it, uh, it'll, um, kind of it'll it'll get rid of the silhouette of the bird right there. So, but let's do. I was thinking something. Okay, so up here it's like a perfect spot for like a quote stamp or something like that. I and mean, I'm wondering if this mountain range would look okay right up in here. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. I might not want it in black. I might want it in like grayscale. So what we'll do is we'll just see how this looks. We'll just um, Take this and <clears throat> let's go for one impression first, and then let's go for just a really light impression in the background. Hopefully it gives me a decent impression. I don't know if I took off too much ink. And because it's really light, we can just stamp it right over the cacti in the foreground, the imagery in the foreground. Yeah, it looks okay like that. And then let's carry this out over this way. I'm just going to be using probably about this much right here, but I inked up about this much. Okay, this one's going to be in that lighter area too. I don't know if I took off enough, but I'm going to blot this off on the base right here so that it stamps out a little bit lighter. Um, so I'm stamping an image lighter in this more illuminated area here, okay? Let's see, I'm going to wipe off the bottom of this. I'm going to have this transition a little bit from wet to dry in here. Okay, something like that. So that's like the light is coming from, you know, behind that. I should color that in just a touch with a little bit of gray. And I don't know, this area in here, 
I don't know, I usually have it a little bit lighter, but <clears throat> I'm just kind of making do with this right here. Or you can make it a little bit darker, you can tone in. Or let's let's see, let's go into these pens right here. These two images are a little bit wet, so I need to be, watch out for that. But here's our, yeah, I don't know, this is like a 20% gray, maybe, something like that. And let's see, let's just add a little bit of value into these, uh, you know, whatever, textures in the mountain here, in the range, like that. And that'll kind of just differentiate in terms of value, the, the mountain's a little bit from this area in the background. See, lighting is coming from here, so just in this darker area of the mountain, I'm just kind of adding a little bit more darkness to it. If I add too much again, I'll just take my blender pen and just blend that out. And on the glossy cardstock, it'll blend out, you know, really easy. All right, and let's see, let's get into these, some of these rocks down here a little bit more. Maybe at the base of the rocks or in the rocks where, you know, using this paper towel isn't going to give me those detailed application of, uh, you know, gray in this case, media, you know, uh, black and white. So this pen's perfect for that. I can get and add a little bit of tone around the base of it or wherever you want it to go. <clears throat> Let's see, here's a little bit of a darker one. Usually I go darker and then work lighter because the lighter one kind of blends out the darker one a little bit more. But yeah, this is working just fine too, it looks like. This pen right here, I thought it was a lot darker than the uh, the other one, but it doesn't seem to be. All right, so there's your grayscale, you know, piece like that with your kind of altered lighting uh, type of thing. That would be really dramatic to have like a moon up there. I don't know if that road render would be running around at nighttime, but um, that would be cool too. So it doesn't have to be just like an area of light, you know, it could be a, an object up there. It could be a, you know, like a lightning bolt or something like that. That'd be cool out in the, uh, in a desert scene like that. But anyways, okay, so two pieces, just grayscale, black and white like that, okay. I bet this is the first thing that I have uh, my, um, back in the days when I was teaching live workshops everywhere, the first thing that we did in Stampscapes, I don't know, whatever, 102 or something like that, 101A or B or something like that, whatever I called it, um, people practiced their um, color ink application, choosing colors and applying them in order in the first class. But then the second class, um, I really wanted them to get their darker color technique down. So we just did a black and white scene. Now I didn't use gray back then. I, they just did all their grayscale with their black ink. So they really fine tuned their darker color applications and achieving, you know, a nice range of uh, grayscale, you know, light grays, mid grays, darker grays, all the way to black just using black. And um, a lot of people, when they got doing that, sometimes um, people, you know, they really responded to that. So, I mean, not everyone, you know, some people, you know, they really like, you know, doing more color, but, um, you know, some people, the comments that I'd hear all the time is, hey, I like this, you know, I think better than, you know, the color pieces, you know, so, uh, I don't know. It, Probably gave him an option going forward. Let's do a little bit of just toning. I, maybe I already did this. I, I think I see a little bit of toning on this one right here, but <clears throat> let's just anchor this one down. I mean, this is kind of going grayscale in terms of our applications here, but um, you know, it's just doing it over a, a colored paper like that. Let me emphasize these shadows a little bit more in here, and I'll show you how easy this goes right here. But the biggest thing on this that I'm kind of illustrating is you 
you want to retain some of those lighter areas right in here. And then again, that represents lighting just because you're shading at the base your different objects like this, okay? Now this is just a black colored pencil. I kind of feel a little scratchy there for a minute. I thought, am I using my, did I just grab my Conte pencil? This is my Conte pencil. It's like a, kind of like a charcoal pencil. Oh, let's see this shit right here. You can kind of add a little bit of tone like this. Okay, so you know how they made this one right here, the four corners a little bit darker. Like this, you know, stronger vignette like that. Okay, same thing right here. Dark, 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 like that. Um, if you wanted to, now I don't know if I'm going to do it up here, but you could, you know, if you want to do it kind of subtle. You can just kind of frame things off a little bit more. On this, these pre-printed vintage papers, you know, you're kind of your lighting scheme is already established because you're already printing, you know, you're doing your impressions on top of a, a paper that already has lights and darks in it. But see this right here, um, you can kind of make this scene a lot more contained and you can kind of make this composition a little bit, you know, the the value pattern on here a lot, seem a little bit more intentional. Um, intentionally applied by just kind of adding in this little bit of a tone in the four corners again, you know, which kind of uh, frames off the piece to so see that little darkness up there. See, it matches right over here more now just by doing this. Now, if the papers were like really light up there, like this light, I don't know if I do that, but it was you know, kind of a medium tone, so you just make it a little bit more medium dark right here. Like that. Okay, so that kind of closes off that edge. I think I need to bring it in a little bit more, maybe. So I'm doing this right here. I'm going with a really light touch like that. And then down here in this corner, I'll darken in that one too so so anyways here's an example of kind of your lighting scheme like this okay it's kind of a little bit separated in here because I have my objects in here so I have this kind of darker thing kind of running right there that's separating in this case what represents the horizon from down here but otherwise this air, whole area in here is like uniformly illuminated right because it's already that background so you just kind of add in your shadows like this a little bit, and then you have that, again, you have that separation between your light and your, whatever, reflected light down here, okay? So, and then here, it's, look at that little haze up there. A little bit of the shadows around my rocks in here too, but, um, you know, just kind of separating those two areas of light like that, um, you know, and it can be really subtle too. Let's do it on this one right here. Okay, so this one's really kind of universally, whatever, illuminated in here. There's not really too much, there's a little bit more darkness up here, but it's kind of a spot little area in here. And again, this is just that, you know, that vintage paper like this. So let's do that thing where we kind of define light. That kind of looks like a little area of light like that. Let's make that our kind of sun or something like that. So we'll have our light source up here Maybe that's this kind of sun or something like that. And let's make this area down here um, illuminate. And then again, this is, you know, it's pretty much working in grayscale. We're only using black media in here, you know, black ink to stamp this out in. And then just a black uh, colored pencil here uh, to color in. Hello, Paper Genius. And uh, let me see who joined in here. Hello, Bonnie. Me Me Megan, Megan Ells, <laughs> if I pronounced that uh, incorrectly, sorry, but great to have you. Neighborhood Roadrunner. Oh, I love uh, seeing Roadrunners. I used to see Roadrunners in our backyard here, but I haven't seen one in a really long time. Okay, now it looks like I already um, added in some toning in here very briefly, but let's really emphasize that. So let's separate um, this horizon right here from 
you know, what we represent, the sky area. Okay, so let's go for that kind of that horizon kind of separation right here. I'm going to go really light, okay, because I don't know how dark I want to make it, but we'll just kind of take it one step at a time, okay, and we'll cast a shadow um, from our flora here, and since this is going to be our light kind of scheme, I'm going to have these shadows kind of going away from that object in there, so, so on this area right here, it's going to go kind of off in this direction. The shadows, you know, this is my general thing, at the base of the objects, um, if this is the thing that's casting, you know, the shadow right here, so I just kind of aim my shadows roughly in that direction. Now the terrain is supposed to be kind of varied, so I might kind of arc it like this a little bit. But just do it in general. Here's a little tortoise right here you can barely see. It's camouflaged, but I'll give him a little bit of a sh shadow too. There's a tarantula right here. <clears throat> and let's see, this is a little creek right here. It's supposed to be, you know, it's probably a dry creek, unless it, you know, there was just some rain. but we'll define that a little bit more, or a lot more. I like that. And let's do, let's go, you know, that dark vignetting on the corners here too. I'll keep it kind of subtle because it is really light in here. On this one right here, I feel like I need to kind of expand the uh, the value scheme. I'd probably add a little bit of white up here, but let's just do the shadows for right now. Okay, I'm not going to add any shadows up here because that's supposed to be kind of the, you know where the lighting is coming from. Okay, something like that on there. So things are a little bit more, you know, a little bit more defined with the use of the tone. We have a little bit of separation of the uh, the landscape from the sky. Yeah, let's see, let's go a little bit darker there. Something like that. Now I'm just using black too. If I was taking my time on this one, I would add shadows more kind of in the spirit of that color in here, like a sepia or something like that. Um, coloring down in here, not just go with black, but black's just like, it's like one of the fastest things to do, right? Because you don't have to think about all these other colors like that. But see, I kind of added a little bit of shadow underneath my, you know, little creatures down in here. And that shadow, especially from these um, saguaros right there, casting that shadow that way. And this one's kind of coming over this way. Um, but anyways, so kind of grayscale-ish, you know, uh, but just happens to be on a piece of, uh, you know, pieces of the vintage paper in this case. And um, the wood grain paper would be a really great one uh, for this type of technique too, just stamping everything in black and just doing a little bit of a black and white, you know, colored pencil work or charcoal pencils, something like that. You know, if you want to just do something really fast. Okay, so let's just do one more piece right here. Let's go with a, um, well, let's just, let's go with a really fast um, piece of semi-gloss here. Did I do it? None of these pieces. Okay, so these two pieces right here were on the glossy. Did I do a, I don't know, I thought I had a semi-gloss stand. Oh, yeah, 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 here. Here, let me, okay, so let me, I take that back. Well, let's do two more. And again, this is going to be really fast. So this is just a stamp sketch um, that I did earlier here. And let's just do that uh, really fast with this lighting scheme. Okay, so we have some subject matter in there. And I don't want to 
like tone them out so they're going to be going into the light right here so this is going to be the illuminated area so let's make this darker over here and then we'll have i don't know some lighting coming through here and right in here so what we're going to be doing is we're going to have kind of two areas of light on the uh the area the whatever the reflected light okay instead of just one okay so then i got a lot of black in here still okay let me see let me be careful about this one's on semi-gloss so it like grabs the ink a lot faster because it's more absorbent all right here let me just uh here i'm not gonna be lazy here i'll just use another piece of my uh paper towel does anyone use paper towels to uh to tone your scenes or is it just is it just me okay all right i need to change my touch here a little bit because like i said uh the semi-gloss is more absorbent than the glossy cardstock, so I just did a lot of, you know, glossy cardstock application right here, so I need to be a little bit careful because, you know, when you apply that down there, it's, you know, you can manipulate it still. I mean, this is still a coated paper, you know. It's just not quite as coated as, you know, uh, um, glossy. Okay, so see that right there? I'm leaving that area kind of illuminated right there. We go darker left and right bottom corners right here, and then this area in here will have my illumination. So basically, all I need to really do is just tone in around the base of my objects, kind of like this, and that pretty much will define my kind of reflected light provided I just don't tone in everything down there okay so you don't need to kind of you know we don't need to anguish over oh well, let me see or should it be light you know what I mean mm. just kind of anchoring down the imagery alone kind of creates those you know that oscillation of light and variation down there and again I think you know this kind of variation like this on you know, minimalist, you know, coloring, um, you know, it's really effective and still create a nice, a nice rich surface, even though it's void of, you know, a lot of things like, you know, temperature and intensity and variations in colors, stuff like that. You still have, you know, lighting and value um, changes. And sometimes when you know when you're not working in so much color too you become a lot more aware of um kind of the textural you know components in a scene too okay so that was the gray i can tell that um that ink on here really dried up faster than on the glossy card stock okay now I, again i'm doing this with ink right here but you could have done this whole thing too you know, with a colored pencil or a pastel or something like that. So you can do your lighting with, you know, whatever media you want. Now on the semi-gloss cardstock, you know, it's open to, you know, the colored pencil. Or on the glossy cardstock, you know, the colored pencil and pastels are out. But this, on something like this, your, you know, anything, pretty much. Um, your markers. The, you know, the, the alcohol markers could have been done on the glossy, too. Okay, so here's the black. Going back to that. Um, upper left and right side shadow work, okay. Again, applying black but not really using it as black. I'm, you know, using it as like, you know, a really light gray being layered in there. Well, you know, with each, you know, application. So on media, though, you know, I mean, the ideal combination is just to not just do one type of medium in here. Like, this isn't, 
good for like detailed work. So I would use this in conjunction with things like colored pencils or pastel pencils or whatever. Like I can't really get in here and do any kind of like application, you know, that's really nuanced. I, I, and I do kind of narrow that down a little bit more and squeeze that little bit and I can get kind of a narrow application like that. And it's probably a little bit smoother looking than doing it with a colored pencil, maybe. Yeah. But I don't know if it's, you know, so, you know, smooth to make, you know what I mean? If you're going for smoothness, that uh, that's going to be super beneficial like that. So, yeah, just, you know, use mixed media. A lot of people don't like uh, using mixed media. It has to be like, okay, this is going to be like my pastel piece. This is going to be my, you know, alcohol ink thing. You know what I mean? And Which those are really cool to do, but um, if there's certain things to be done with a different type of uh, medium, you know, within the same piece, it's, you know, I would, I would just, I would mix and match more, you know, multimedia, you know, pieces. Okay, so let's see, let's hit this a little bit more with our textures again. Now that I know where my lighting is in here, so I can use my rock texture like this and I can just reiterate that whole idea of lighting in here, you know, hitting those illuminated areas with the lighter impression of this, in this case, these rocks right here. All right, so there you have it like that. So there's your lighting. Okay, so we have our kind of our lighting coming in here. And let's emphasize, we need to do something right here. Um, so here's these little people walking, right? And let's do that little thing. I'll just create a little bit more of a separation between light source and again, uh, reflected light down here. So in this case, you know, that separation between your light source and reflected light down here. It's this wide area like that of tone in this one right here. It's a very light, you know, separation, but it's, you know, it's pretty wide in here. So right here, I'm just creating this little bit of a, you know, horizon line. All it is is, you know, separation like that. So sometimes it's very narrow like that. Let's, let's create a little bit of a shadow work coming from our characters they're really distant so i'm not going to you know have like shadows coming down here you know the shadows aren't going to be extended you know like 30 yards or anything like that but you know they have a little bit of shadow coming out from them here's this uh organ pipe cactus plant right here this one see and this see this is like i can get into these like shadow areas at the base of these objects so much easier with a colored pencil than doing it with the, uh, you know, wadded up paper towel. <laughs> All right, so a little bit more shading in here too. You know, you can fine tune your things and this would be a good time to, you know, add in a little tweak in terms of like color or something like that if you wanted to. But I'm going to try to, uh, not do that here. That's another thing too. So um, we did that in my, I was mentioning what we did in my, uh, you know, my second class. Most people took the first class and second class. So um, one of the things that we did was on those monochromatic pieces, um, after they got their grayscale piece down like this, what we did was like, what I call like color tinting, you know, it's kind of in the spirit of, uh, you know, how people used to uh, color tint their black and white photo prints. So we just take a, like a really light shade of some tone. This one already looks like I did that with blue, but a really light tone just kind of added over the top of it. Um, you know, something like a beige warm tone or a cool tone, something like that. Some people would totally colorize, you know, um, their pieces and they would use, you know, just different colors in different areas. And again, like I was mentioning before, they would just utilize the grayscale just to establish the lighting scheme, but then they would totally color this, you know, their pieces all in. And that looked cool too. And like I said, I, I do that for some of my pieces. Like I've done, 
doing 11 by 17 pieces or something like that, I generally want to do, a, you know, just get a quick application of, a, you know, my shadow work, my lighting work kind of established like really fast, you know, because I know how much uh, coloring work I'm going to be doing with colors, paint pens, alcohol pens and all that on there. So it's kind of nice to be able to just do something really fast, you know, in the background and just be done with it. Okay, so that was that. So let me show you how to do, like, these are all out on, on some stamp sketches where I already had everything stamped, okay? And, you know, we're just coloring it afterwards. If you, if you do that, stamp it a bunch of these things and let them dry for a little bit before you go on here with that big slathering of ink, you know, just so you're not smearing anything on here. Um, but I'll show you how you can get kind of this lighting scheme kind of going um, just inherently and just stamp over the top of it. It's less kind of targeted because I don't know where I'm going to stamp anything in here. I mean, you can have a little bit of an idea, but you can also just do this thing where you just get this background in here and then you just kind of work around it or you just stamp your imagery right over the top of it and that makes for a, you know, a good way to work. Okay, let's see what we should we do. Let's just go, let's just have a general kind of area of like this hazy light up here. And again, you can do this around, like you can stamp like a, a sky figure up there, Milky Way, Moon, whatever up here, and then just, you know, tone around it. But then we're going to leave our reflected light down below like this. Your hand is shot and doesn't like the impact of the tap tap. Oh, I got it. Keep it nice and ergonomic, you know, when you're doing these things like this. Okay, so... I don't know if there's any ink on here still. Well, let me switch out. I forgot this side right here. It has that, a lot of black ink on there. Uh, so Linda brings up, you know, this thing, you know, when you're doing these types of things, one of the things I'm always doing when I'm sitting around is I'm always kind of stretching out my hands like this, you know, I go like this and I go like this. I'm not talking about when I'm doing my scenes, but if I'm watching TV or something like that, I'm always doing that type of thing with my hands. Um, I like doing that type of thing because, you know, especially if I'm doing like technical pen work or something like that, I'm doing these little tiny dots or something like that. You always want to kind of, you know, stretch out your joints and everything like that and leave them nice and limber. But especially when you're doing your application of media, whatever it might be, to always keep things in a nice ergonomic so you see, I'm not working like this. This would be like, you know, whatever, or the card's right side up or something like that. See, I have it at an angle like this for my application right here. Okay, so... So this is just kind of establishing a, an illumination, um, a background illumination. Um, you can do background color schemes and things like that. This one happens to be for uh, whatever lighting scheme, um, whatever, monochromatic grayscale pieces, okay? But, you know, some people, I, I'm saying that because some people ask, um, it, which is a really great question, if they haven't seen scenes done before and they see something with a lot of tone and color or whatever in it, they can't, one of the things that's hard to tell for them, unlike other styles of stamping, if you're stamping black and white, I mean, uh, outline styles of imagery, and you're coloring within the lines, they always know that you stamp your imagery first, right? And then you color within the lines, you color those objects um, that you've stamped out. But in scene stamping, you know, where color might just be going, you know, it's going right through imagery, you know, it's in the background or something like that. I mean, we could color these, this cacti in with pencil, you know, colored pencils or something like that, but they can't tell um, if they haven't seen scenic stamping done before, if you if you did you do the background first or do you stamp your imagery first and then do the background like skies or something like that? And the thing is, is that you know, I mean, with a lot of the imagery, if it's tonal imagery, um, you can do it either way. So you can do a braired background. You can be stamping over the tops of holographic card stocks, printable vinyls that already has the background established. Or you can go with blank pieces of paper and just start off with a composition, stamp everything out, and then color it in. So, that, you know, it gives it, there's different looks to it, of course, you know, you know, depending on which way you do it. 
and with what media and what types of surfaces, but you know, there's a lot of um, kind of variation there. Okay, so here's your light source and reflected light, or if this is the light source up here, this is your reflected light down here. And you can just develop it as much as you want. Hello, Bill. Is the thumbs up counter broken? I don't know. Uh, I'm glad you asked that though, uh, Cynthia, you know, is not, hey, is the thumbs down button uh, broken? It's, it's not registering. <laughs> By the way, that being said, always appreciated to get the uh, thumbs up for this little, my tiny channel, you know. Okay, here we go like that. So that's basically kind of what's going on, like in this scene right here, right? Now this one's just using gray and this one's on semi-gloss, you know, and this one's on glossy right here. And I haven't used black on here yet, but let's, let's go with the black right here. But see how streaky that is right down in there? So for scenes, it's really good to have that kind of that streakier, kind of varied textural look. I think it makes for a nice, rich background. I, you know, if it was like super smooth too, I mean, that would be fine too. Um, but, uh, but if you're getting streaks, you know, I would just go with it and make it, you know, part of the kind of the vocabulary of the piece. If you're someone that can get like super smooth, transitions and everything like that and if that's the type of thing that you're into i think that would be great to get that too you know or to have that as a result for me it's hard to kind of not get you know things a little bit streakier so I, you know that's that's you know i integrate that in with the uh, the whole spirit of the piece Okay, now this is getting a little bit saturated right here. So as I'm applying it in kind of a, you know, a, you know, a, you know a, a drag type of application, it's kind of like removing ink, you know? So I have to kind of build up the ink a little bit more this way, okay? Uh, with that tapping motion where you're building up little beads of ink on there. Okay, but anyways, that is the um, background right there. It, you can go for multiple tones too. Like, okay, so this is the way, this is like an example, not with these colors right here, but this is like lighting and, you know, reflected light for a foundation like this. If I was going for a Northern light type of thing, it would be, you know, whatever colors the Northern lights I wanted to represent, but it would be vertical like this, you know, and it would be real streaky. That's like a perfect example of really making like super streaky areas, but it's all it is just changing the uh, the background from horizontal to vertical for, you know, those more curtainy styles of uh, Northern Lights at least. Okay, so let's see. I hope I can get some good impressions on this. I would normally probably wait for this to dry a little bit. Um, that's pretty wet. This paper is not that glossy. It's more like this. See, it's just a little bit satiny kind of, so you can see how kind of wet this is right here. All right, on this semi-gloss. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. I'm glad uh, that YouTube kind of removed um, the uh, I hate this you suck button, you know, um, from one of the options on uh, watching a live. <laughs> okay, now this is just a quarter page piece, so um, we're not going to have a ton of space in here. So let's see, what do I want to do on this one right here? Hmm. We can't have too many of the... Uh, 
the larger pieces in here and oh i wanted to use the old man and dog image at some point in time in here let's maybe something like this okay since this is going to be a fairly um you know significant um uh visual kind of focal point i'm going to stamp the little crit you know person first a lot of times i kind of just put them you know i drop them in as kind of an afterthought you know after i stamp out you know my main imagery um but let's do this one first and then i can kind of work my other um you know imagery around that in scale look at my um my tag and peel has all that uh glitter on it from uh using glitter so we're going to be doing a lot of uh, experiments with glitter and uh, test so i i thought my i gave a lot more stickles colors to my wife years ago i thought i had like 20 of them but um uh, she didn't there weren't like yellows and oranges that i wanted to, as i was thinking about for um like fall foliage i want especially wanted like a yellow one for those aspen trees but uh i don't know it seemed like she mostly had the metallics i said hey do you remember those stickles i gave to you like years ago because i wasn't using glitter you know back then um but she said hey can i have those and it's like sure it's like so i asked her like i don't know whatever like 20 years later uh do you still have those stickles <laughs> i thought they might be dry too but i tried them they work pretty good but we're going to be doing a lot more um like glitter explorations here you know linda picked up some body glitters too that uh you said i didn't understand what you were saying there linda did you are, are you returning those ones it so it was glitter that came in like a gel you know so you, it doesn't require like a any additional adhesive so you just i don't know just take it you just rub it on or something like that hello sharita Hey folks, Sharita just started crafting right here. I don't know. I don't. You won't hope you won't mind sharing. You know me sharing this, but Sharita did like a, you know, uh, printable, you know, holographic vinyl sticker paper reflection card. You know, and it looked great, um, right off the bat. So I said, hey, you know, see, she's getting into it. She doesn't have to. You know, it's not thinking about. Ah, that looks. You know, that looks look like too hard. I said, hey, you might have an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> not having uh been crafting before because you don't have the these barriers on how um things uh should be used you can just kind of, kind of get right into it you know what i mean with using uh kind of the unconventional stamping surfaces and uh media combinations okay oh well I, yeah there might be that many subscribers bill but uh i don't know like how many people like watch the uh the vids like one in a maybe 100 of those uh subscribers okay so organ pipe cacti uh like and subscribe <laughs> by the way Okay, so let's do some of this foreground first. I'm gonna to try to, I wanna add in some of the stuff into the background too, but uh, let's see how much I can do. I'm just, I'm kind of learning how to use this, uh, the uh, the cacti here. I've, I've been mentioning on these videos, I, I'm having to kind of alter my, um, oh, kind of stamp imagery usage. Um, especially when it comes to like these types of uh, flora imagery because with things like pine trees you know it's, they're more full so these are you know the desert um, types of uh, imagery are they're sparser looking okay so um you know like a tall tree i mean it's real narrow and there's like a lot of gaps in it like this joshua tree so you can see through it so you can use more of it 
you know, or this, you know, Ocotillo. It's real open in here. It's like using a branch instead of like a, you know what I mean? I mean, it's not a tree, but um, um, kind of the more kind of prominent flora within the area. You can use more of it if you want to and really fill it in. Okay, so that I stamped that. That was really, that's super wet down there, so that I'm a little blotchy down here with that. Because I'm stamping like wet into really pretty damp still. Here, let me use, let me push scale a little bit more here. Okay, let me go with these, kind of some of these larger rocks right here. Oh, <laughs> you can ask Linda to, uh, to do that, Bill. She's the one that bought the body glitter. And it was like a hologram. One of the things that I'm finding with, uh, that I mentioned here too is that um, the, uh, the, a lot of the glitters now are holographic. So in crafting, you know what I mean? Uh, Linda pointed this out too. She, she wants to get a different glitter that doesn't have all those colors in it. You know what I mean? If you, you just want it like orange for this area or, or like if I'm doing a, like an aspen tree, I don't necessarily want that yellow glitter. That's the main color of it to be holographic where it's flashing red and blue. You know what I mean? Within a like an aspen tree. So I'm going to be looking, I, I do like that holographic aspect of it because it's really twinkly and it really changes in there. You know, it's really attention getting, but if I'm doing like specific types of trees, I don't want, you know, certain colors to be um, kind of within there. So um, yeah, uh, I want to play around with uh, and find, you know, what's out there. It, there's not as many options out there as I thought there would be. I thought there would be a gazillion types of glitter, but it seems like a lot of them are holographic. A lot of them are, if they're the chunky style, they're all hex, hexagonal and not circular. Um, so like a circular one would be really cool for um, like aspen trees with those round leaves and just, you know, like yellow. Um, for the fall colors um, of those trees. But um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't looked around like a huge amount, but just, I don't know. I've looked around a little so far and yeah, I'm just not, uh, I'm not really finding, uh, um, you know, too much at this point in time um, in terms of what I thought might be available and out there. So, I don't know. So the stickles, you know, we were doing these uh, little kind of like cave things with, uh, you know, gold. So I found these two right here that I think might be pretty good. Um, you know, for some, see, I, I, I glitter like everywhere. I think we were eating dinner the other day and my wife said, um, like you have glitter like on your nose. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, you know, I think that's the, uh, that's the, uh, sign of things to come, you know, because, uh, glitter on a couple of those pieces recently, I thought, you know, that looks really, really fun. So like on this one right here, I'm going to add in some, uh, glitter to it. I stamped this one a long time ago, so I'm going to add in some paint pen work on that, but yeah, I mean, like on this thing right here, you know, I mean, that looks okay as is, but. When you go like that, that little extra glitter in there? I don't know. I really like that look. Okay, so I'm building up right here. So this is one of those things. I mean, I'm not really thinking too much about the lighting, maybe a little bit, but, uh, you know, the lighting is already established, so you're just kind of stamping, you know, your pieces in there. And this is going to be sky up here, and this is going to be kind of surface. Okay, let me see here. Let me. I'm gonna stamp that out once and get a, some of these rocks behind this organ pipe cactus like that. So see, it's kind of farther off like that and, you know, kind of grayscale. So you get a little bit of that texture in there without obstructing the silhouette of this foreground image right here, okay? So let's go with, um, I 
Let me see. Oh, there it is. I feel like I should put this like behind there because that's what I usually do with things like pine trees, but I think this one right here, I'm going to put it out front of this rock. Or I don't know, maybe I'll put it amongst the rocks right there. I'll put it kind of midway in there. Maybe I'll like this. <laughs> I'm laughing at Bill's comment. You know, the, uh, the the you suck button was before his time on a uh, before his screen time okay how about one of these distant organ pipes in front of the rocks and then another one behind the rocks like that okay now see i, I feel like putting one back here but that's going to break up the silhouette of these right here and that would it would too, look too muddled <clears throat> so let's just go with that and then let's do um we'll do a varied kind of garden here's um a uh ocotillo right here okay black but let's push grayscale again okay and value so we'll stamp it out once and then i'll edit in here and behind that kind of grayscale rock formation back there i'll stamp kind of a grayscale ocotillo back there for a minute there i thought i screwed up and stamped that over the top of that which would look more distant but i want that nice silhouette of the characters right there so i'm glad that didn't happen let's do another one too let's put one like back in here again i usually wouldn't do that but i find that this desert imagery you can really kind of pack it in and uh you know in terms of textures and it looks just fine like that you know what i mean if that was like another pine tree in here which i guess the silhouette of these is more defined too i mean pine tree you know the bows are coming up but if i have a distant tree you don't have like a lot of open space but in the cacti and desert imagery it's open enough you know where having those layered images i mean i think it looks good like that you know where you know, like i said with other types of imagery it, it would just look too cluttered and i kind of avoid it but i don't know i haven't done anything so far with this that you know then i with i'm talking about all the you know the imagery that i've stamped out in it so far it hasn't really uh you know, obstructed anything, or it hasn't been an, like an issue. <clears throat> okay, let's go with another Ocotillo down here, I think. Okay, yeah, Linda returned the uh, the glitter because of the large pieces. Body face glitter, I think they will really work better. I was going to say, well, I mean, it might not have worked for the scenes, Linda, but you can always use it for, you know, for your body glitter applications, you know, um, using it on the body. <laughs> it make it gonna incorporate that in with your uh you know that's gonna be your like your new style you know a glitter regimen in the morning okay now this one i'm stamping it there's a lot of ink around on the perimeters right here so i'm gonna hold this one down a little bit longer i don't know if i need to because this is a little bit more of a kind of a you know spindlier image rather than kind of the more solid organ pipe one but let's just hold one like this eyeshadow would uh, look like eh, yeah if anyone has any of those types of things you try it on some scenes 
Oh, what it's smudging. So maybe you apply that glitter shadow or something like that, but then you just spray seal it afterwards. <clears throat> and I think that would be fine. Okay, so here's an Okatio like that. Oh, I was going to put another one right here, but maybe I want a little bit of textures around here instead. Um, hmm. Jeannie just did this one in like white ink in the, the Facebook group. That was really cool, which I don't remember seeing that anyone ever do that. It was probably done in, I don't know, Jeannie probably did in multiple colors though, right? Hello, Laura. Have you tried the sparkle paint pens? Uh, I've used... No, I've used the gel ones before. I think I have one of those like right here. See, this is a glitter silver um, gel pen. I don't, I, I don't remember using it a lot though, or any of those, or the jelly roll. I think there's a jelly roll glitter, right? Okay, so I want this to be light again too. Okay, so I'm going to do one of these. I stamped it off pretty hard that time, okay? And let's cover up some of these rocks, although I probably don't need to because they're, this is gonna be really, like a real pale um, uh, gray here. Laura, those, uh, that astral photog astrophotography was amazing. She sent me a link, you know, I was saying, hey, we, we need some of those photos to do some like, you know, you know, space photos. And uh, yeah, that was amazing. Laura, you, you gotta put that link up in this chat window or on the, uh, you know, thing afterwards. You know, if people want to check out uh, your, uh, your, uh, those photos of yours. There's whatever. There's, there's like nebulae and uh, I don't know. There's like everything in there. I was shocked, you know, um, at those shots. It's like I only saw that, you know, shots like that from like you know, like the Hubble. <laughs> it was really amazing. But it would really, be, you know, be awesome if we can, you know, utilize them, you know, for private usage or something like that. And, uh, you know, for some of our scenes, you know. I don't know if you'd, you know, you guys would open it up for that. Um, okay, here's a little bit of uh, extra texturing like that in here. Okay. But I don't know. I mean, you can do other things up here. You can do, you know, I could stamp out, you know, that distant mountain in the background like I did before. Or you can put clouds up here that maybe on this one right here. I don't know. Doesn't that seem like a perfect place for like a quote stamp up here or something like that? I don't know if I went too dark in here because the quote would go from darkness into lightness like that. So, or you can just do the quote on a separate piece of paper too and, you know, mount it in there, you know, after you mount your card up. Um, I like... Um, I like to do things like, so this is kind of monochromatic here too. It's just on a, you know, a photo paper, you know, and I colored it in here, but I do like on these, um, kind of more minimalist pieces like this. I like going with, <clears throat> I've come to like using the, uh, the silver metallic cardstock to just, you know, to mat them off. I think it kind of adds a little bit more of a kind of excitement to it. You know, I don't, without kind of, you know, uh, overpowering it. So here's this, you know, this is pretty much monochromatic. I added a little bit of green down in here, but I really like this gold around them on the perimeter. I, uh, um, like I said, I don't find it overpowering or anything like that either. So on these ones, I think this is a warmer tone like this. Um, I don't know if I'm going to format all these, but, um, I think the gold on these ones because it has the warmer tones within here and these ones right here that I just did are more kind of a bluish, you know, gray, whatever, silverish. So 
I think these would look really good with like a silver. Um, how do you see that glitter right up there? It's like on all my pieces now, I have to kind of uh, wipe them off a little bit before I spray seal these. Now I don't need to spray seal these to adhere anything down, but I think it just, whatever, you know, it adds a little bit more um, saturation and uh, it, it kind of unifies the surface a little bit more. I mean, there's not a lot of different textures in here, but if you do spray seal these, I think I think it tends to look a little bit better. The saturations of, uh, especially, you know, the dye base inks that we're using on these gets a little bit stronger. Sometimes when the dye base inks, especially those mementos and ranger styles of inks out there, when they dry for me, when they're applied in this amount of uh, saturation and application, um, they dry kind of dull for me, um, meaning they didn't fade out, but if you spray seal them, they'll look, you know, like this, like, you know, kind of still moist and freshly stamped right there. So is that a little piece of glitter up there? I can do something where it's like a little North Star up there with a little glitter or something like that. Okay, but anyways, this is, you know, just an example of um, doing some pretty quick scenes in... Uh, monochromatic, grayscale, whatever you want to call it, black and white. Um, but if you just kind of vary your lighting schemes around in here, I find that they're all fairly rich in composition. If you just joined in, this is kind of like center lighting right here, just a vignette around the side. And then what you do is you have a little bit of tinge of darkness in here. It could be darker. You know, these ones in here are a little bit darker, but you just separate these areas of lightness like this from the lower section, which, you know, represents the land, okay? So what you've done is you've created visual dialogue between like a light source and reflected light. Now these ones aren't working around like a moon or something like that. That would be very specific in terms of a light source. But even up here, this is your light source on the horizon. See this little tiny narrow bit of, you know, shadow that I put here, it kind of separated this area up here from down here. And, oh, here it is right here too. You have light, dark, and light down here again. And there's light, dark, light, light, you know, little darkness right here throughout here, but here's the light. So it's more at an angle like this, you know, with your lighting scheme. These ones are much more kind of vertical. This one's kind of a little bit all over, you know you know, with this big separation, but it's going, instead of this whole area being light down here, this um, shoreline right here, um, or wash, if it was in the desert, it's just, you know, this area of light up here is separated from down here, but it's just basically this area of lightness right in here, you know, and then you have your, just your shadows anchoring these objects down there. So you can just do some really easy um, lighting schemes in there just by that one simple convention of light up top and light down below separated by an area of darkness like that. And it could be something that's very, very small in terms of that uh, separation line in there. You can do it without that separation too. It just looks a little bit more defined having something like this in here. You know what I mean? It creates a separation from surface and sky or, you know, surface and background like that. It anchors things down a little bit more too. Let's see. Halloween body glitter on me. I don't... <laughs> jelly Roll is one of the many brands of glitter. That Jelly Roll was something. I did that this video on um, gel pens and I think I just I grabbed a bunch of gel pens um, you know for my supplies and I don't I just I don't remember if I've used those jelly pens in a while or ever okay but those jelly pens were still working like brand new you know what I mean in terms of roller I think I was the video might have been where I was testing for um, you know whether the the pens clogged or not. Those things were amazing, you know, in terms of a, a gel style of ink or whatever in there. And they might've even been um, glitter. So having that kind of substance in there and not having not used those pens for probably more than 20 years, 
stored probably upright too and worked like a charm you know whatever type of ink they were using in those things it was really fantastic if they're still using the same type you don't think youtube allows links i thought they did um i don't know uh, maybe it's when i respond to uh, people like in the comments section um i know it allows those links i don't know if it's because of me but um i don't know uh i don't know well laura has like some laura and her husband have like like phenomenal photography in there it's like you know it's like sky you know sky and telescope uh was that the was that the name of that magazine out there i don't know there's probably a used to be a bunch of them but um yeah it's like yeah, you know, more than publication worthy, you know, and I was shocked at some of those uh, uh, sky figures you were able to see like that. Unless they're, I don't know how you're doing it. They're probably all like comp, you know, comp, uh, whatever you call it, composite photos, you know, stitched together or something like that, but uh, phenomenal. But they would look awesome, you know, in photos stamping back in here, you know, have one of those like uh, constellations back in there or something like that and just stamping silhouettes of the... Uh, you know, the desert imagery right over the top of it would be really cool to be able to do. I don't know, we, 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 you know, I mean, there's stuff out there. You can do a search on uh, um, uh, uh, whatever Flickr or just on the, the net you know, for those types of images too. And uh, just print them out and, uh, you know, try it out. But sunsets and all that type of thing would be really cool. Um, yeah, silver matte layer. What a great display. They look like black and white photos. Yeah, that's one of those things, you know. You can do these types of pieces like this. So if you just joined in, these two pieces right here are on um, semi-gloss cardstock. Why does, you know, the thing that's kind of weird to me is looking at these is why does the, uh, <clears throat> the one that I just did right here next to this one, why does this london fog looks so much more blue than this one because i used the london fog on this maybe the london fog i don't know it's weird maybe i use more of that london fog on here that has a bluish kind of gray tinge to it this one looks just like pure neutral grayscale almost a little bit cooler in the uh that area right there i I'm just wondering if, it, you know, when this is drying, I'm wondering if it's going more neutral looking, like a neutral gray. But this one right here looks kind of bluish. <coughs> so, I don't know. <coughs> so I'm talking about all this type of lighting scheme in here. And remember this whole thing, you know, where I just toned in with, you know, paper towel on all these, like that, sponged it in. You can do these lighting conventions with any type of, media <clears throat> just depending on what surface you're using so if it's on a semi-gloss or matte <clears throat> i'm losing my voice here um you know you can color in these tones like this with <clears throat> pastels you know pan pastels colored pencils you know whatever charcoal or um uh alcohol markers you know anything okay the glossy card stock it's you're a little bit more limited because it is glossy and it's not going to take that <clears throat> those soft types of uh, media um on the semi glosses or mats too if you want to play around with graphite too that looks really cool too you can even stamp out your objects like in a dark gray or something like that or maybe silver or something like that and then you color your shadow areas with like graphite, you know, like a pencil. And then what that might look like is it might look like the whole thing is done like as a pencil drawing that you did, you know, which might be really cool. So I don't know if I've tried that, uh, just silver uh, media or like a, there's other types of uh, inks out there. What was that one that's not silver, but it's kind of Oh, uh, silver looking. I, ah, I forget the name of it. Um, it's not pewter. I don't know. Is there a pewter pad? But if some pad out there was like a metallic, but it was like pewter-ish looking, I think that would look like a... I think that would look really cool. And plus it'd be kind of reflective because you'd do it all in kind of graphite too. And, you know, I mean, it'd look like a, you know, like a pencil drawing that you did yourself. So um, I think that would be really cool. 
So anyways, okay, so, and again, if you just joined in too, I was mentioning, you know, hey, if you don't like the, um, you know, the more, kind of more monochromatic nature of these, the grayscale, if it's too minimal for you in terms of, um, you know, like color ranges or something like that, if you want, instead of just a value range in here, you want to, you can just tone in here. Like, I think this one would look really cool with a little bit of beige or a little bit of warmth right down in the sand area or even in here if you want to do that. Um, so you can kind of tint them like you would, uh, you know, in the spirit of uh, like a black and white, you know, print photo coloring, you know, which they were doing with a bunch of like really faint, um, I don't know what they were back then, like dyes or something like that. And that uh, has its own kind of uh, look to it or spirit to it. Uh, you can make them look a little bit more sepia print-ish, you know. If you're going to do that too, maybe you would stamp out your objects instead of doing it in black. You stamp them out in like a dark brown or something like that. And then you, instead of toning in with color, like, uh, bl I mean, black and white, you tone in with like a, you know, you like your distress inks, uh, you know, walnut stain and antique linen, you know, that type of thing. Old, what was that? Old paper, I think, you know, those, like those types of tones like that. And it would look like a, an old, you know, sepia print type of photograph or something like that. If you want to make it look really antiqued like that. Or you can make it look antique by just stamping, you know, and doing monochromatic on the uh, the vintage papers. Like, that's a lot faster. <laughs> All right, folks. Little uh, impromptu piece right there. Let's see. Uh, Arteza, Arteza, I never knew they how to pronounce that. It has a fine glitter collection in primaries. Okay, I'll check that out. Yeah, that's the thing. It, everything's in fine or chunky too. Sometimes I was thinking I'd like something kind of in between, where it's not less like a like a grain of sand all the way to like a you know a two millimeter you know hex hex uh, hexagon or something like that. Um, but yeah, I want to look around and uh, see what's available out there. Uh, let's see. Gray flannel is gray. Oh, okay. I know. Well, then that that London fog. They need to change that uh, that top. You know, the printing of that sticker right here. You know, that right there is like a completely neutral gray. You know what I mean? Oh, now I, I use black on here too, but that's like. That's like downright blue next to this, you know what I mean? The sticker that they use on there, so um, I need I need more accuracy, <laughs> you know, from uh, from those uh, you know the whatever those color designations, you know those labels like that. So yeah, okay, yeah, yeah everyone check out that uh, John. R R R R I, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, Laura. But uh, yeah, John V's at Astro Ben right there. London Fog, okay, yeah, Sharita. You gotta try it in grayscale there, Sharita. Um, that sh this right here too is a really great exercise um, for everyone. I, I do it too. Um, sometimes when I'm doing a lot of like color work, like especially if I do like a Lev My 17 and if it's all in color or something like that, um, Genie has all those now. <laughs> I, sometimes I just do, I just want to go grayscale after that because I just like used a gazillion, you know, colors on those big pieces, especially, or if I do like eight and a half by 11s, I just like, you know, as a contrast, I like doing the, the grayscale pieces like right after that. They're really fast. I think they're really effective. But again, one of the things I mentioned in the uh, description of this one after you do grayscale like this, um, it, I think it heightens people's sense of lighting, okay? Because that's, you know, we're not dealing with temperature, intensity, hue, when we're doing grayscale. So the thing that you're hyper aware of is like lighting and the retention of lighting. So you're really getting this kind of heightening your sense of value, basically. You know what I mean? Because that's what we're working with here unless you're working with, you know, bluish gray or something like that. But, um, and then, you know, when you go back into your color work, you take that kind of heightened sensibility of value 
into your color work. And I, I think it's a really good exercise for that. I know that that's the way it works for me, you know, when I'm doing that. Um, when I just go back to something really, you know, a more simple, um, whatever finishing process and what you got. And like I said, you can do this type of thing too. So I, in my classes that I was doing, I didn't just do it in gray. So I said, uh, one, you know, someone finished really fast. Some people would finish like, in, you know, you know, a grayscale scene, it, it can go so fast. Some people finished, you know, some people took 20 minutes or something like that on it. Um, 30 minutes. Some people finished in like five minutes. So I'd say, okay, now instead of just going with black, start off with like a, do a, a piece in the same technique, but just do it in brown. So they'd stamp out all their imagery in brown, tone in with brown or something like that, you know, and, and dark blue, you know, something of that sort. And, uh, um, those, those really came out great. Um, yeah back in that time and a lot of people you know, like I said it it makes for a really quick scene so it's a really great option if you feel like you know going to the craft room and stamping something out really fast and you want to do something complete you can just do it in grayscale and I think it has a really good look to it you know I don't know like black and white photography has a really it kind of it has a little bit of a different spirit than um color too I feel um you know in the same locations, you know, to people at the same time, foot, you know, shooting some area. It's not a better one or anything like that. It's just kind of really different. So, all right. Glad you like the desert scene seal. I liked your scene uh, that you scenes that you've been posting in the group. Check out the Facebook group. You guys are on there. There's some, uh, you know, some really cool um, desert scene examples getting posted now. He said about his photos and he says to say thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that, Laura. That was like awesome, you know. Like I said, I was shocked, you know. <laughs> it's some of those imagery. I did, you know. Uh, those are, that was just with your own equipment, though, right, too? You didn't go up in like in some observatory and use their, uh, use their equipment for some of those shots. It was amazing. Thanks for joining in, everyone. If you feel inclined, I would recommend trying some gray scale pieces fast and dramatic. Fast and dramatic. <laughs> yeah, it was a yeah, it was awesome stuff. I I haven't had a chance to go through it all because I was like, you know, enlarging a lot of those pieces and just uh, you know, and checking them out, uh, you know, and whatever full you know um, scale or something like that, you know, on all the thumbnails. It was like, hey, you, you got a shot of that, you know, thing. It's mostly a lot of the nebula uh, imagery out there I love. All right, folks, have a great night. If you have any questions about uh, this, you know, let me know. When doing these types of things, remember, just use a lot of that ink in your first tones and just kind of work a small area like this. Don't go like, don't apply like this, this, this. You apply in one area like that to get that nice transition, okay? Don't go like this, you know, like this around and you know, like that you know always want to just kind of work it you know with a nice light touch and just build it up and it's really super easy to do um, and um the glossy card stock you know is really a good one to go with because it's nice and slick for that so but yeah uh, it's fun stuff try uh, different things sponges or whatever whatever you're used to in terms of your uh i don't know ink applications go and uh yeah Every now and then, you got to go black and white. <laughs> All right, good night, everyone.